Let's clap for Jesus. Let's give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise with your hand. Clap for him and give him praise with your hand. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you tonight. We thank you for great things you have done in our midst. Father, we thank you for the covenant of Jubilee upon every family. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for the open heaven over us. We thank you for the new beginning that you have promised us. We thank you for the fresh wine you have promised us. Father, we thank you for your anointing upon this place. We thank you for the open heaven upon this church. We are grateful. Receive our thanks in Jesus' name. King of glory, tonight we are gathered here. In your name, we stand here in your name to receive all you need, all you want to give to us. You know our needs. Father, we pray this evening you will give unto us what you know we need in the name of Jesus. Give to us what we need in our family in the name of Jesus. Give to us what we need in our ministry in the name of Jesus. Give to us what we need in our careers in the name of Jesus. Give to us what we need in our profession. Give to us what we need in our spiritual life. Give to us what we need in our family life. In the name of Jesus. Let every, let every space in our life be filled by your presence. This evening in the name of Jesus, as we sit at your table to eat, Father, we pray that we feed us. Open our eyes. May we see what you want us to see. May we hear what you want us to hear. Mighty Father, I pray this evening that you will grant me your utterance to speak out your mind, to speak out your heartbeat in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal yourself to us. Open, the, open our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Put your words in my mouth. Heal us tonight. Save us tonight. Deliver us tonight. Revive us tonight. Open our eyes. Enlighten us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Once again, let's clap for Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's give him praise. Let's give a shout unto Jesus. A shout of victory. A shout of joy. Let's have our seat in the Lord's presence. Once again, I appreciate God on the, for the life of our daddy and our mommy, the set men of this house. Thank you very much, sir for the invitation granted me to stand before God's children and servants of God. I thank the Lord for the life of ministers of God in the house, our fathers and mothers, and also Sister, Sister B.C. Adewale, God bless you, man. Thank you, may the Lord bless you. The Lord increase you on all sides. And all the ministers of God in the house, may the Lord bless you. Our choir, God bless you in the name of Jesus. More anointing, more increase. I celebrate all the instrumentalists and the men in the media. May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. I celebrate all the workers in the church. The workers, the ushers, the protocols department, moving up and down. People acting behind the scene. 
May the Lord lift you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Celebrate yourself with a clap offering. Thank God for your life. Amen. How many of us were blessed yesterday? How many of us are hoping to be blessed more today? How many of us are expecting great abundance in this convention? I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, your expectation shall be met. And the Lord shall meet beyond your expectation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yesterday, the Lord was speaking to us about the season, the family season of Jubilee. Family season of Jubilee. Season of deliverance. Season of freedom, of liberty. Season of new beginning. And it was the new covenant a promise of God for this place. I don't know if you believe it, but I want to, I want to implore you to believe it. I don't know if you really key into this that God is doing, <clears throat> that at every new beginning, the Lord makes promises. When the Lord sent Abraham out of the land, he promised him. He said, I will bless you and I will increase you. He promised, he said, they that bless you shall be blessed. He said, I will increase you, I will bless you, I will multiply you. So at the beginning, God always brings promises. If we are stepping into this auditorium and we are having our first convention in this auditorium, in this church, God is giving us a promise. He is starting with a promise. And it's a covenant. And he declared it covenant of jubilee. Covenant of freedom. Covenant of new beginning. Covenant of restoration. If you, if I want you to, I want your hearts to cling, to cling into what God said is want to do. Because every miracle Jesus performed, he will tell those people, be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. So I want you to take up your faith. Strengthen your faith. And cling unto what God is doing. Since yesterday, today, tomorrow it will continue. Next tomorrow it will continue. In this convention week is a season of promise. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. You will not miss what the Lord is doing. Yeah. Clap for Jesus again. So I want to read again the passage the Lord gave to us yesterday. Left the chapter 25 verse 10. And you shall consecrate the fifth, 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you who is the Lord talking to here? Who is the Lord talking to? He said, it shall be a jubilee unto you. Each and each of you shall return to his possession. Whatever it is the devil have stolen from your life. Whatever it is the enemy have taken away from your life. Whatever the gift, whatever the opportunities, whatever the privilege that you have lost, whatever the chances that out of negligence, out of sin, out of carelessness, you have lost in the Lord's sight. The Lord is giving you another chance in this season of Jubilee. He's giving you another chance as you enter into another realm in this church. The Lord is saying, 
Each of you shall return to his possession. I'm repeating again. The Lord said, each of you shall return to his possession. In the name of Jesus. And then more importantly, he said, each of you shall return to his family. I am speaking here to all the families represented. That everything the enemy have stolen shall be returned. In the name of Jesus. Whoever have departed from the love, the joy that has departed, anything that have lost, anything that have strayed away from your family, the Lord said, every goodness that have strayed away shall come back in the name of Jesus. So that was what the Lord spoke to us yesterday. We saw the purpose of God for every marriage. And we saw the promise and covenant of God for every family. The, family, the purpose and covenant of God for every family. We saw it yesterday. We saw that covenant of Jubilee made for the family in this church. Now, we want to look at the conditions for enjoying this covenant of Jubilee. We want to look at the conditions for enjoying this covenant of Jubilee. Every promises, every promise that the Lord will give there will be an attachment of condition that if you will fulfill that condition, then the promise will come to pass. Even, if, even though the Lord Jesus Christ was sent to the world for salvation of all mankind, there is still condition attached to that free salvation. Said for whosoever, whosoever will believe in him shall not perish. It's a condition because some people will not want to believe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Even the condition for salvation for the mankind still is whosoever. We believe in him. The Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 said we shall diligently hearken to the commandments and carefully observe the all I say unto you that the Lord shall lift you up above all the nation of the earth. That was when Moses was speaking to Israelites. But that word of God still applied to us. That the Lord can lift us up. The Lord can raise you up. If you diligently hearken to his voice. And carefully observe all he says. So the promises of God has attachment of conditions. And the condition cannot be broken. In this church. We are in the night now. And we have light. There is light everywhere. We have light because there was a certain condition that was fulfilled. And the condition that was fulfilled was that we switched off, we switched on the light. If we switch off this light, everywhere we go dark. And everybody, if anybody, everywhere goes dark, everywhere is dark, are you going to say there is no light in this church? There is light in the church. There is a provision of light. Only that you must fulfill the condition to have the light. Go to the switch. Switch it on. Then there will be light. Yesterday the Lord spoke to us about the season. My family. It is my family season. And the Lord said, season of what? Season of jubilee. Season of freedom. He has just brought it to us. He has just decided to bless this church. He has just decided to give this church that season. He decided to give this church season of jubilee. The season of jubilee, if you look at the story of Israel like this, jubilee is every slave must be free. The season of Jubilee is everyone in captivity must be set loose. And spiritually speaking, 
It's a season of deliverance. As we enter into this church, as we begin this convention, as we have the first convention in this beautiful auditorium that God is still going to enlarge and expand, he is starting a, he is starting a jubilee with us. I therefore declare in the name of Jesus, everything the Lord has declared shall be established in this church in the mighty name of Jesus. So what is the condition? So we want to look at the condition very fast. Look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 and verse 20. Verse 19, we are particular about verse 19. He said, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. This is the Isaiah speaking to the people of Israel. We just want to look at an example of condition. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Then Isaiah now spoke to the people. He said, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword. Devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. That is in the land. In a particular land, there is goodness. But there is condition for the goodness. And if the condition is fulfilled, oh, there is goodness in the land. So this evening, the Lord is speaking about family season of new wine. Condition for the covenant of Jubilee. The family season of new wine. John chapter 2, verse 1 to 10. Is a story that we are familiar with. And I will quickly read that story for us. And on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And I will stop there. That is verse 1 to 3. No. Verse 4, and Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Verse 5, his mother said to his servant, what so, Whatever he says to you, do it. And let me stop there. That is the story of the wedding of Cana of Galilee. Whatever it says to you, do it. And so, Jesus Christ told the servants, Go and fill the six water pots. There was this, the Bible says there was six water pots, empty water pots, that is set there for purification of the Jews. That is, they use the water there to wash their leg before they enter the hall. But the pots were there, and definitely there was no water inside, so it was empty. And so Jesus said, fill the pots with water. So the servant filled the pot with water. And Jesus told the servant, serve it. And so they serve it. As they served the water, they gave the water to the head of the event. Bible says as he tasted the water that was turned wine, he was surprised. He said, where have you kept this good wine up till now? Every man serve. And at a certain time, they serve the inferior. But you have kept the good wine up to now. And that is the end of the story. Now, from that story, the Lord wants to speak to us about the condition. The condition for entering into that season of jubilee for our families. So that our families can have fresh wine. I pray for every family here in the name of Jesus. Your wine will not go stale. Your wine will not go tasteless. So, we see the story of the wedding of the Cana of Galilee. 
It is the image of many marriage. It is the mirror of many couples. It is the mirror of many homes. It is the mirror of many marriages. But in this case of the wedding of the Cana of Galilee, unfortunately, they began to have crises right on the wedding day. The wine finished. Symbolically, symbolically, I'm not saying physically. Symbolically, wine translates to love. Most important thing on the wedding day, love. So symbolically, like a parable, love. But in the wedding day of Cana of Galilee, on the day, in fact, they are still in the wedding day and the wine finished. And the mother of Jesus ran to Jesus and said, they have no wine. They have no wine again. They have no wine. He didn't say they have no food. <clears throat> she didn't say they have no food. She said they had no wine. And Jesus rose up to the task. So the major problem, therefore, was that on the wedding day, the wine finished. And it is the image of many homes. So marriages, it is the second year that the wine has finished. So marriages, it is the fifth year their wine has finished. And don't forget, it is for better for worse till death do us part. And wine finished the third year. Till death do them part. They now begin to manage their marriage. They begin to manage their union. There are some people, I have even read news of the wine that finished on the third day. They wrote it in the paper. 72 hours wedding. And there was divorce. Today we have different reasons for divorce. In those days, divorce is very far to the church of God. It is, the, it, is, it is very scarce. Today, it is very common. They are even idolizing it. They are even praising it. In fact, that, not just as, as we said yesterday, there are many Christian homes that the wine has finished long time ago. And now they are in 15 years of their marriage. The wine has finished, but they didn't divorce. So. They didn't divorce. So. But they're in technical divorce. Systematic, emotional, psychological divorce. When they first married, when they first married, the first week of the marriage, the first month of the marriage, oh, when the husband is not around, the wife, ah, the heart will be there. Ah, oni, oni, where are you? Oni, where are you? I cannot eat. Without seeing you, I cannot eat. I don't know where you are now. Where are you? Where are you? I'm coming. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. But after three years, where are you? I've traveled. Bye-bye. Oh, Even the wine has finished and the children know it. The love is not flowing in the family. And the children know it. But ladies and gentlemen, children of God, have this understanding that if God could establish marriage, the first institution in the Garden of Eden, and God said, the two of them shall be one. Let no one put them asunder. It means this marriage thing, this husband and wife matter, is not ordinary. If the Lord could compare, if the scripture, if Paul could compare the relationship between husband and wife to the church and Jesus Christ, this thing has eternal relevance. Though. This thing is beyond this world though. Only that Jesus, did, you know, the Bible did not even open our eyes to see, but I know Jesus Christ said there is no marriage in heaven, but there is family. Though. There are children. There are homes. There are family there. Even Paul said it's a mystery. 
Mystery that you cannot resolve. Keep your wife very well. Hold your husband very well. Because I am certain there are people who get to heaven and they will simply remembering that I, I, I wish I had held my wife well. Something will be missing. Something will be lacking. It is true, heaven is full of joy. But sometimes maybe there is tears God Jesus will wipe away. Which tears? There are some people who will lose some things. So if the first institution of God could be marriage in the Garden of Eden, it has eternal relevance. I pray for every marriage here. You will succeed. There must be reason why the devil is fighting marriage. There must be reason why the devil is fighting homes. There must be reason why the devil, the enemy, is waging great wars against marriages. In the Garden of Eden, everything was going fine until there was marriage. And Eve came. When Eve came, then Satan came and tempted and went after Eve. And Eve took the fruit, gave the husband. Ah, ah, it was <coughs> Shebi, Noah, uh, um, Adam, Adam, Adam was Adam was giving instruction. There was no argument. There was no resistance. There was no stepping back. The love, maybe it was the love, I don't know. He collected what Eve gave and hate. I was wondering when Satan was giving Eve the fruit, I was wondering why didn't God speak now? Speak, my daughter, my daughter, that is Satan, that is Satan, don't collect it. Hmm. The moment the two of you are together, there is a stepping back at times from God. Husband have to discern what to collect. You have to discern the advice to receive. The wife must discern instructions to hear if it is from God or not. You must discern the instructions to hear from the devil. Those. I pray for every marriage here. Every intrusion of the devil, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. When, when God came, he drove all of them out. It's as if a particular plan had been disrupted. Then God looked for another family unit again. He looked around and then he saw Noah. By the time he got to Noah, the whole the sin that Adam had committed. Cain was born. Abel was born. The sin had skyrocketed to the point of Cain killing Abel. There was a problem. Why? Because husband and wife, those two people, husband and wife, they have broken God's law. And so the sin spread to the children and they kill one another, one killing the other. And then it developed. The thing skyrocketed to the point that the Bible says the wickedness filled the whole earth and God came and said, oh, I regret I created man. I'm going to destroy everyone. But he found Noah. Let's pick another family again. He picked Noah. Noah, come into the ark with you, your wife, and your children. God always work with family unit. And the two and the, Noah wife and the three sons and their wives came into the ark. And then the flood, the Lord destroyed everything. And then after 40, after after about months. The water decided. They came out of the ark. And the Bible says, and God blessed the Noah 
God bless my again with the original blessing. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the heart. God repeated the blessing again upon that family. So that the blessing can continue now. But no. No. With that blessing upon Noah, he got drunk. Omojiyo. He got drunk. He, uh, one of the sons saw his nakedness. He told the others. He caused the son, Kai. The devil is always after the family unit. The Lord came to Abraham. He picked the family unit. And he said, I will bless you. In blessing, I bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. In your seed, the whole world shall be blessed. And Abraham left with Sarah. And they were going. And they got to Canaan land. And they said to it. This time around, there was a delay in having a son. I don't know what God was planning, but God was preparing Abraham very well. Each time, the Lord will bring Abraham out. He says, look at the star. This shall be as multitude as these stars are. That is the seed. Your descendant shall be like the sand of the seashore. After some time, Sarah came to Abraham. We have waited enough. Oh. We have waited enough. Look at my son. This is my maid servant. Go. Go into him. Go her. Maybe you will have a child. Ha! I don't know what happened to Abraham. Oh. No argument. No resistance. The way Adam did not resist. The way Adam did not argue. Ah. Abraham said, Oh. And went in. Just one chance. She was pregnant. Where was the barrenness that occurred to Sarah? Why didn't he occur to Agai? And where, where was God? Why didn't God do something? I'm telling you that family unit is very strong. Many times God stepped back. Even in the midst of your fasting and prayer, if you break protocols, God step back. You res God respect family. Family decision. May you decide right. And because I don't know why God didn't put barrenness in Haggai. If I were God, ah, Haggai will not give bad. You want to disrupt promises. But no. God stepped back. Because it was a family decision. And that one get pregnant. Just like that. Fast. Give birth to a child. First year. Second year. Third year. Until the child became 12 years. Even the child did not go sick self. Girl. The, guy, the child was hale and healthy. You must have the right decision in your family. And this is what this covenant of Jubilee is about. It's a covenant of restoration. May everything going wrong in your family be restored. At the twelfth year, the Lord now came back again to Abraham. The Lord now spoke and said, walk before me and be perfect. And the Lord made a promise by this time next year, Sarah shall carry a child. And Sarah carried a child and Isaac came. But let's leave that and let's now come to John, book of John, 
You know, there are evils, issues in family units. Issues, issues. Devil attacking homes, attacking family, attacking family from Adam to Noah, from Noah to Abraham, from Abraham to Israel. To Israel. The attack kept on coming. Then in the book of John, Jesus stepped in. Right at the beginning of the marriage. Ever before Satan wanted to step in, Jesus stepped in. On the wedding day, suddenly, wine begins to finish again. Ah, ah. Jesus Christ stepped in. He renewed the wine right from the start again. This time around, he's going to rule over your marriage. He gave no chance this time. He stepped in right from the start. So the condition, therefore, is what the mother of Jesus said to the servant. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. And that is the only condition that gives, that fulfills the covenant of Jubilee. What is God saying to your family? Do it. If you don't do it, there is consequences. You can be a child of God. You can be praying. You can be fasting. There must be fulfillment of God's condition concerning homes. The devil hates your family. He hates you. He doesn't like your home. He doesn't like your marriage. He hates everything about your family institution. He has hated it right from the start. So anytime as a woman, anytime you see any negative thought rising up against you, in your heart, against your husband, against your children, no. Your husband is not the issue. Your children is not the issue. It is Satan that hates this marriage from beginning. That is the issue. As a man, anytime you see problems rising up in your heart, hatred, inaffection, Rising up in your heart, strange motives, strange thoughts, strange love against somebody else. Rising up in your heart against your wife. No, why? your wife is not the issue. There is an enemy that hates your marriage right from the start. Now let's quickly look at it. Number one, I just want to pick it. It was a six water pot of stone that must be filled. And I, I pick each of the six water pots as condition that must be filled and served. So I take it as six conditions that must be fulfilled. Six conditions that must be fulfilled for fresh wine to be retained in every marriage. If you are a single brother here, Please pay attention. I have been listening to mar messages on marriage even before I got married. I have been reading books on marriage before I got married. I have been counseling people on marriage before I got married because of these lectures I exposed myself to. It is not until the time that you begin to now pray. Start your prayer early. Start your learning early. If you're a single sister, start your learning very early. So don't say we are talking to the married. No, we are talking to family. Yesterday, the Lord spoke about the sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see, shall, shall see vision. Old men shall dream dreams. So it's family we are talking about now. If you are a single, you are part of the family. So listen. Let's look at number one. When, Jesus, when the mother of Jesus said, whatever he says to you, do it. That is the first, that is the major condition in your family. Be very, very attentive to divine instructions in your home. Father, mother, be very attentive to divine instructions in your home. There are many marriages, there are many families, there are many couples that are suffering. As a result of disobeying divine instructions. Yes, they are children of God. Yes, they fast. Yes, they pray. Yes, they serve God. Yes, they are sacrificial in the household of God. But they don't pay attention. 
to divine instructions. And so they suffer because they don't pay attention to divine instructions. There are some families, there are some, there are some families, there are some families where what they are not supposed to do is what they are doing and they are suffering. But they are very diligent in the church. They are serving the Lord, but they don't pay attention to divine instructions. The mother Lord Jesus said, whatever I tells you to do, do it. So if you desire the benefit of this jubilee, you desire restoration and repossessing of your possessions. If you desire healing, purification for your healing marriage. And you desire your marriage to be better than it was. And you desire your own personal life to be better than the way it was. There are that six water pots that you must fill it and you must serve it. And we go over it very, very fast. Number one, we mentioned something that is similar to this yesterday. Marriage is the union, listen to me, marriage is the union of two imperfect persons joined together by a perfect God. So, after God had created Adam and had, he had lived peacefully in the garden, then Eve came. And then Satan tempted Eve. You will not say ah, if if was one who caused the problem. No, the two of them, the two of them have issues. That is just, it's like a parable. Both husband and wife, they are both imperfect. So because they are both imperfect, there will be need to forgive each other from time to time. Part of what we are going to take home from this convention is the spirit of forgiveness. You'll be wondering, we mentioned it yesterday. Why is it number one today? Because the Lord is laying emphasis to it. The sin of unforgiveness is more terrible. Why? Because as a child of God, Jesus has forgiven you your sin. Now, if your wife now offended you and you refuse to forgive, you have to. If you don't forgive man their trespasses, your father in heaven will not forgive you. It means, if you don't forgive your wife for whatever she has done, you don't forgive your husband for whatever, whatever he has done. Your sins that has been forgiven you remain cancelled. That forgiveness remains cancelled. You take it up again upon yourself. You know that's very terrible. And that's a very terrible consequence. Because when your sins are not forgiving you, the door is open for affliction. The door is open for sickness. The door is open for, for slavery. The door is open for infirmity. The door is open for captivity. When your sins are not forgiving you. When your sins are not forgiving you, the covering is off. The blood covering is taken away. I don't know whom the Lord is speaking to tonight. One of the reasons why the anointing flows in the family is when one of the reasons why anointing, which an, why anointing flows in the family is when unforgiveness is not there. When forgiveness is there, anointing flows in that family. I am speaking to everyone here tonight. Part of the blessing of God in this convention is that you might receive your deliverance. And one of the easiest ways of receiving your deliverance in your family is bringing forgiveness into your heart for your husband. Having forgiveness in your heart for your wife for whatever they have done. It's not that he has injured me, he has offended me more than five times now. No, there's no condition for that. Colossians chapter 3, verse 13. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Among the church of God, in the household of faith, there are couples 
who hold grudges against one another. They hold grudges against each other. There are people I have, I've, I've heard, I've heard of, of, of minister of God, pastor, elders, ministers, I've heard. Who hold grudge against each other, husband and wife, and they will come to church smiling. They will even carry, the husband will even carry the wife to the church. But at home, they live separately. They live separately. No talking. No joy. They have offended each other now for the past three weeks. And they have been holding that grudge. The husband has refused to eat the food of the wife. And so later, the wife has refused to cook again. Everybody is going to the kitchen to cook their own separate, different food. And the children are in serious situation. Family is open to devil's attack. Anytime. The illustration the Lord make me to understand is that if you lock anybody in the prison of your heart, you are the jailer. The person is the jailed one, Abby. Both the jailer and the jailed also always live in the prison. Do you get my point? You hold the key. You are the jailer. You have jailed the person. Both of you are the prison together. When you release that person, there is nobody inside the prison again. All of you will go home. Both of you will go home. You will be free. You are holding any person in the prison of your heart, unforgiven. You are locked up. You are imprisoned also. You have the key in your hand, but you are not going home. I pray for everyone here today. Everyone locked up in any prison. Prison of the heart. You are released in the name of Jesus. Everybody, anybody holding anybody in any prison, release the person because there is freedom and deliverance in the hair in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Point number two, very fast. Point number two, quickly. Love, water of love. Fill the pot with water of love. Very, very fast. Fill the pots with love. I will just say very briefly. This is the instructions of God for husband. Husband, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself to her. Wherever love is missing in your home, get it back. Show love to your wife as Christ loved the church. The condition, the standard of the love, the condition and the standard of the love that Christ wants you to show to your wife is this standard Christ shows to the church. It says, so husband also to love their own wife as their own body. He who loves his wife, love himself. That is, that is um, efficient. Is that Ephesians? No. Yes, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. So husband who to love their wife, he will love him, his, he will love his wife, love himself. I'm not going to say more than that. The, the level of love you show to your wife is that level that is coming back to you. That is God's standard of love for your wife. Do you know that some husbands don't care if their wives are crying? Some husbands don't feel the pain in their wives. Some husbands don't feel the pain in the heart of their wives. They cannot read the code of their wives. And because they cannot understand their wives, it's even painful. But I pray for every husband here in the name of Jesus. That we have understanding of your wife in the name of Jesus Christ. And because the Bible says, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, husband, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. 
have understanding of your wife. There are some things they cannot express. They can't express with word of mouth. You should be able to read their actions. And, and, and it's, a, it's a great work. 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you are still studying your wife to understand her. I don't know, maybe you understand what I'm saying. Yes. But one thing that is very, very certain, the Lord commands you, husband, love your wife and don't be bitter against her. Show her love. It is God that is giving you that instruction. As Christ loved the church, is the way you should love your wife. Now, not loving her is breaking the protocols. And if you are not showing any love to her, you allow her to be in pain, you don't show emotional love, you, don't show, you, you, you leave her in emotional pain, you don't care about her attitude, you don't care about her pain, about her concern. When you do that, the Bible says, if you love your wife, you love yourself. And the meaning of it is that if you don't love your wife, you don't love yourself. We are talking about conditions for enjoying fresh wine in the season of Jubilee. If you are speaking harshly against your wife, stop it. You have not shown concern to your wife, stop it. There are some husbands here, their wife has handed them over to God. He said, well, God, I hand him over to you. Ah, that is more, that is more critical. That is more problem. Tonight, I pray for healing for every wife that is hot in the name of Jesus. Every wife that is disturbed, cry, that is crying in secret, that is hot, that is wounded in the heart, I pray, may you receive healing in this convention in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's quickly look at number three. Number three, therefore, is the opposite. Hallelujah. I'm quickly going over it. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord. For husband is the head of the wife as also Christ is the head of the church. Now, as I'm saying all these things, I'm, I'm telling us conditions for the season of Jubilee. The promises of God does not come just free like that without condition. You are looking at the conditions. It's a simple command. You want the condition for you, you want the season of jubilee, you want the season of freedom in your family, you want season of divine provision, season of divine restoration, you want season of new beginning, you want to enjoy the fresh wine, you want the Lord Jesus to perform miracle of fresh wine in your home. You don't want your wine to go stale, you don't want it to go watery. See, each time you hear that people are 20 years in marriage, your heart beats them. Because your marriage is five years and you are already tired. And you are hearing 20 years in marriage and you say, how did they do it? How did they manage it? Ha. When your wine is continually fresh, it will be as if you've just married. That is the truth. That is God's divine plan and I pray that for every marriage here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Not that you are not going to have disagreement. Not that you are not going to have contention. You will have it. But because Jesus is always standing by, whenever there is any issue, you approach Jesus. The way model of Jesus approached Jesus and said, they have no wine. And Jesus said, fill the pot. Exactly like that. Because you are a child of God, you are born again, your, spirit, your life is filled with the Holy Spirit, even if there is contention, even if there is misunderstanding, Jesus Christ is standing by to consistently renew the wine from time to time so your marriage cannot be boring if you understand what i'm saying clap for jesus so wife submit to your own husband as to the lord for husband is the head of the wife as also christ is the head of the church therefore just as christ is subject so just as the church is subject to christ so let the wife be to their own husband in everything. You want to wait. Wives, women, daughters of Zion, this is what the Lord is saying to you. Your marriage can be beautiful. 
Your marriage can be enjoyable. Your marriage can be sweet. But the condition God is giving to you in order for you to have fresh wine in your home, that condition, you can't beat it. Submitting to your husband. If you think your husband does not have enough wisdom to submit to him, eh, pray. Tell God to give him the wisdom. That he does not have enough wisdom. He always take his own way. He, always, he has missed the road now five times. He has missed the road now five times. Uh, how must you keep on submitting to the person who keep on missing the road? It is your responsibility. Pray. You can't still be the head. It's still the head. So you pray with your prayers and spiritual unity. You will get the direction. But don't break the protocols. There are instances in the scripture of many. Proverbs chapter, 29, chapter 21 verse 9. Better to dwell in the corner of a house top than a house share with a contentious woman. That is this picture of some women. Contentious. Contentious woman. Lousy. So stubborn. So irritable. Unsubmissive. Even the household have known them. The co-tenant have known him. She's beautiful, but she's stubborn. She's beautiful, but she's headstrong. That is not the virtue of Christ. And a woman like that cannot, cannot make the house to enter into the season of fresh wine. There can't be fresh wine in that house. The wine will continually be stale. The wine will continually be watery. The marriage will continually be under bondage. So women are like that. And therefore, finally therefore concerning that point, be mindful of who you work with. Women, be mindful of the association you keep. Be mindful of the group you work with. There are many women now, there are many women outside now, even in the church of God, that they are agents of Jezebel. They have this spirit of stubbornness. Hey, sisters, run away from this terrible spirit of feminism. It is the spirit of the devil. And it is raining. It is ruling. It is, it is, and it is worldwide. The spirit that wants to make a woman to be on equal capacity, spiritually, physically, legally, with the husband. I too have authority. I have head. You have head. I have spirit of God. You have spirit of God. I must shine. You must shine. Be where the Lord puts you. And that is... Listen to me. Whatever we are doing on this earth is temporary. Heaven is the goal. Heaven is our home. Don't let anybody mislead you. A lot of ladies are going to the earth. can't say like that. My God, be careful. Especially if you watch Yoruba movies. Ah, Okuni Olonu. Okuni Olonu. Ah, men are not men are not good like that. Don't take it easy for them in, in Hollywood movie. If you have watched too much Nollywood movie, you'll be misled. Because you would think that they are saying the truth. Look at their life now. Look at their homes. Do they have homes? You can't be guided by that. It's only the scripture, word of God, that can guide your life. Women, you are daughter of Zion. An excellent woman is the crown of her head. Excellent woman is the crown. Proverbs 12, 14. Uh, Proverbs 12, 4. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. But she who caused shame is the rottenness in his bone. And that is not the way God has created you. So therefore, be who the Lord wants you to be. Submitting as Christ, as unto Christ. Your submission to your husband, your loving your husband, your following your husband. If anything is going wrong in his life, go to prayer. He listen, God listen to you. 
settle so many things in prayers and God will listen to you. Submission. What of submission? Fill the pot and serve it. You must serve it. Point number four. Oneness. Genesis 2.24 Therefore, a man shall leave mother and be joined to his wife and they shall be one flesh. Oneness. Spiritual unity. That is point number four. Be in spiritual unity, not disagreement. In spiritual disagreement, you are not allowing God to walk. Point number five. Openness. Be open to one another. Genesis 2.25 And they were both naked and the man and his wife and they were not ashamed. God is demanding that from your life. Openness. Be open. No closing secrets. Don't close up secrets. No hiding secrets. If you want to enjoy this great jubilee, that is the condition. Openness between the husband and wife. Whatever you are hiding to one another now, open it up. Don't give room for the devil to strike. Don't let the devil close this door of jubilee. Openness. Why must your wife not look at your phone? Why must your husband not check your phone calls? Why? What are you hiding? What are you hiding? What are you hiding? Repent. All these small, small, small things opens the door for mistrust and unbelief and, and lack of faith in each other. Clear all the logs and enter into this season of jubilee in the name of Jesus. Finally, if you are willing and obedient, you shall hear the good of the land. Obedience to every instructions of Jesus Christ. And you shall hear the good of the land. Whatever the Lord speaks to you in your family, obey. Hearken to simple divine instructions. And you will enter into that divine authority of jubilee rise up on your feet rise up on your feet rise up on your feet i pray for everyone here in the mighty name of jesus enter into your season of jubilee that amen is very low i pray for you in the name of jesus by the authority of this word of god that comes to you tonight enter into your season of jubilee I pray for you tonight in the name of Jesus. By the authority of this word that has come now, enter into your moment of fresh wine. In the mighty name of Jesus, enter into your moment of fresh wine. Every plans of the devil against your marriage, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Every intentions of Satan over your home, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family here. Enter into your season of jubilee. Enter into your season of deliverance. Enter into your season of restoration. Enter into your season of freshness. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.
the beginning. This is the this is the beginning. The first convention in the new auditorium, and a new covenant is being signed by God with this church, and it's a covenant of jubilee. It's a covenant of liberty. It's a covenant of liberation. It's a covenant of restoration. It's a covenant of new beginning. It is God that is signing that covenant. It is not man. He said it shall be a season of jubilee for you. Each of you shall return to his possession. Where do you have to return to your possession? You have a possession that has left you. You have a possession you have left behind. And God is declaring every possession that is yours that has left you. You are going to go back to it. Everything. Some people have visions that have left them. Some people have destinies that have been scattered. Some people have problems. The problems in their life is because of the fact that their destiny has been disrupted. Some people have callings, mandates from heaven that have departed from them. Some people, it is their career that have stolen their vision. Some people, it is their, it is their profession that has disrupted them and disturbed them and taken away their heavenly mandate. The vision they see, they didn't see it again. The calling they saw, they didn't see it again. Their zeal for God, when they got converted, have been dropped behind. I am declaring for you tonight. Because in the season of liberty, in the season of jubilee, you have to go back to what you have left behind. The zeal you have left behind. The glory of God you have left behind. Your zeal, your prayer life, your study, your Bible study word. The vision you have received, you have to go back to it. You have to go back to what God has given you originally to do for him in the mighty name of Jesus. Each of you shall go back to his possession. Your possession, everything that is yours, that the devil has stolen from your hand, you shall go back. You shall have it in the mighty name of Jesus. I therefore declare every stolen destiny restored in the name of Jesus. I declare every stunning vision be restored in the name of Jesus. There are some here that have been called by God to do his work. They have been called by God to do his work. But something else has taken away, taken away the call of God for their life. I am declaring this night, if you are part of this jubilee, you are part of this new covenant, See, the new covenant is about getting back and possessing your possession. That is the covenant God is making with the church. It's a covenant of jubilee. Covenant of freedom. Covenant of escaping from slavery. Covenant of getting free from captivity of the devil. Covenant of deliverance. And getting free to serve the Lord. So if you are in that position everything the devil has stolen in your life the lord is part of the covenant part of the deal is that you are going back into it to collect what the devil has stolen from your hand in the mighty name of jesus clap for jesus and he said each of you shall return to his family aha each of you shall return to his family And that is a major aspect. Each of you shall return to his family. Every stolen love shall return. Every sweet wine that has gone sour in your family, in your home, shall return. When the Bible says each of you shall return to his family, it is talking about it is sounding like family that is already scattering it is sounding like family that are no longer enjoying love marriage that is no longer that is no longer as sweet as the beginning the love you have at the beginning when you married has been tampered with the love is not the same again. 
the devil has tampered with the love it is no longer original it has become adulterated the way you carry your wife at the beginning and how long how many years is your marriage <coughs> and you are getting tired of the marriage seven years and you are beginning to endure the marriage seven each time you hear people of 30 years your heart will sound boom the lady the woman you saw as angel before the sister you knelt down to give flower to I begin to I began to look at her as a monster you are no longer enjoying your marriage I begin to endure it a person you love so well I begin to shout at her you are living in the same house but you have left the marriage there is emotional divorce you come to church together but you know you are divorced emotionally today in the church of God we have a lot of emotional divorce not physical so that there will be no noise there are brothers who have deliberately taken transfer from Lagos to Maiduguri. Deliberately, they walk it. And they will be on phone. Oni, Oni, how are you? For six months. They are not divorced. But they are separated. But not physically. It is because of work. Jesus, if the Bible in Genesis says it is not good that man should be alone, but you walk, he helped it for him. It shows the plan of God for husband and wife is that there should never be separation. After 15 years in marriage, one stupid, hungry prophet now tell you that your wife is a witch after 15 years if she's a witch you are supposed to be the first person he was to kill and eat after three children you are now seeing your wife after three children and now seeing your wife as a person who the devil is using to block your glory and you have a car and you have a job I don't know who I'm speaking with it is the friends you are working with some Adam was working in the ministry of the garden there was no problem naming giving names to animals there was no problem Bible says he named all animals and birds and creatures. No problem. Do you know that despite faithfully walking in the garden of Eden, God still came and said, it is not good that this man should be alone. There is something more better, more important than the ministry the man has done. And there is still more help didn't need help to name animals he named all the animals but if God said I will make help meet for him help to do what again what this it means the man still need help with the with the woman to fulfill God's divine plan and purpose and that is exactly what the devil is trying to attack fulfilling God's plan and purpose today we have the spirit of the devil everywhere in corporate organization in places
places everywhere around us steering women against their husbands raising spirits of arrogance and stubbornness against their men we have them among ministers of god teaching young young ladies so some young ladies are going to the altar defensively with fights inside of them if it do nonsense for you opt out and they are going to the altar with that must not do nonsense the type of patience that we had that our fathers had is no longer existing Anytime you hear wife submit to your husband, ah, there's going to be war. Share it on the internet, say it on me on social media. There's going to be problem. Ha, huh? why should we submit? Ha, huh? we have we, we too, we women, we have to head. We too listen. When you say husband is the head of the woman, say ah no, we I too we have head. You don't understand. If you understand, you will know. That the head is a responsibility. Head is not a title. Inside the head is here. You hear for the family. You must not hear wrongly. You hear correctly. It is whatever you hear. And you tell the family. The family will follow. So you must hear correctly. That is the responsibility of the head. Inside the head is the eyes. You see correctly. When God speaks, you hear correctly. When God shows a vision about your family, you see correctly. So, everything is in the head. The ears to hear, the eyes to see, is in the head. It's not a title, it's a responsibility. It was, it was Lot who made the decision that they wanted to go to Sodom and Gomorrah. It was not Lot's wife. The Bible says when Lot lifted up his eyes and he saw the green land of Sodom, he saw, he saw wrongly and he followed and the entire family followed. Is any man here? Is any husband here? Say, husbands are here. Our husbands here. And if you young brother that have not yet married, you listen very well. It is not carrying flower and kneeling down, giving. Have, your, have correct head. Inside the head is Inside the head, the, the mouth, mouth, mouth. You prophesy right for your family. You speak correctly for your family. So, head is responsibility. Is it the wife that will say, I feel God wants us to go to Kaduna and an husband will pack load and children. Let's follow. Is it the wife that will say that? It is your husband. So when the Lord is speaking here, he said, and each of you shall return to his family. That is, return to your responsibility in the family. Husband, return to your responsibility in your family. Return to loving your wife. Wife, return to submitting to your husband. Return to praying for your family. Return to honoring. Return to taking care of your children. Don't let career take your children away from your hand. The society is evil now. The community is bad now. The world is wicked now. You cannot leave your children to be tutored by people again. Listen to me. It is what you carry. It is what you carry you are going to give to your children. Husband, mother, sister, if you are not loaded with the word of God, you are empty. If you are empty, your children will be empty. Outside are people, forces of darkness, evil people. In those days, cultists are only in the university. Later, we began to see them in colleges of education. Later, we began to see them in polytechnic. Later, Amazingly, we began to find them in secondary school. And then, of recent, we began to see them in primary school. And then, surprisingly, we began to see them in primary one, two, three. 
small, small boys. Who knows all the names of drugs? They be, they be telling you the names of drugs. And the devil is possessing many of them. Your children leave house in the morning and they go to school. You didn't follow them. And they play with friends. You don't know what they introduce them to. The world is dangerous now. The world is wicked now. In those days, when we were very young, we didn't have access to television. It is our parents that have television. And our television has kokoro. You don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. It's only our fathers here that know what I'm saying. Tell me you know what I'm saying, sir. How many doors? Two doors now and key. And they lock it like this. Bam. And the fat, uh, Baba will lock the key and put the key into his pocket and go to his room. World was so controllable at that time. Five o'clock. They open the, they open the door of the television. They open it like this. All of us will sit down on the carpet, rubber carpet. You remember, we all sit down rubber carpet. It is in our presence they will sing national anthem to open the television. WNTV, WNBS, and then we will watch. We watch television from Cowboy, we watch Cowboy, John Way, everything. And then all the drama at that time are, um, are morality drama. Children can learn out of it. Nine o'clock, network news. After news, our father, our daddy, will now pray. Then they will lock television. Everybody will go and sleep. Today, Everybody is the transmitting director of the television stations. Everybody has television in their houses. You have television in your pocket. The world is dangerous. The movies that are showing on television, <coughs> movies that are showing on Netflix, showing on the cable televisions, the present movies are dangerous movies. The Yoruba movies are intentionally Occultic and ritual and idolatry, and more importantly, immoral with nudity. The world is dangerous. Your children leave the house and go out. You don't have anything to feed them. You yourself, you are so occupied with your career, occupied with your vision. Your children, heritage of the Lord, is under your care. You have nothing to feed them. You don't know that is your continuity. Your children is your continuity. When the Lord is promising Abraham, he said this land I will give to you and your descendant. Any promise God makes for you is for you and your descendant. And listen, you cannot have everything. Do you know that when the Lord promised Abraham and his descendant, those promises, Abraham did not even see the stars of the sky. The Lord said, come, look up. What do you see? Stars. He said, can you count them? Say, so shall your children be as the stars of the sky, as the sea, as the sand of the seashore. Abraham didn't see it physically. What Abraham was able to see before he died was Isaac and Ishmael. And then his household. He didn't see all those stars. He didn't see all those sand of the seashore. The promises God gave him, Abraham did not see. Because he was not supposed to see. His children had to see it. Continuity. Every vision God gives to you does not end in your life. Does not end with you. If it does not end with you, why is it that you, why is it that you are not spiritually intentional about your children? Why is your mouth not full of prophetic declaration for your children every morning? The book of Proverbs it says train up the child the way he should go and after he when he's old he will not depart from it teach train up the child the way he should go he should go please media if you see that verse give me train up the child the way 
he should go. Not the way he may go. Not the way he can go. But the way he should. Compulsorily. The way he should go. Why must you teach the child the way he should go? You are the leader. You are the head. Father. You are the eyes that must see. You are the ears that must hear from God. You are the priest of the family. You are to hear from God the instruction for your children. You are to tap God's from the throne of God and let your children know what the Lord is saying about their life. But if you are empty, you are too occupied with your career, with your profession, with unnecessary things, how will you be able to pass across the mind of God for your children? The world is bad. The world is wicked. So many things are happening now. But yet, Joel, chapter 2, verse 28. Do you know what it says? It said, during the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Say, and your sons and your daughters, thank you. Say, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And if you are son here, if you are daughter here, the Lord is telling you what you are supposed to do. That is why I said, this is a family meeting. It's a family convention. And it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's my family season. Family season of jubilee. Family season of liberty. Family season of freedom. Family season of restoration. Family season of new beginning. So it's, a, it's about the whole family. If you are a son here, you are a youth, you are a secondary school, you are a higher institution, you are, you are a son here, you are a daughter here, the Bible says you are supposed to be prophesying. What does prophesying mean? Prophesying is not about them um, saying somebody uh, has a car in the house. Oh, that's not nonsense word though. Uh, name of your house is this. The name of your uncle is the oldest thing that we see on television. It's nonsense. That's not the prophecy I'm talking about. Prophecy means, prophesying means speak out God's mind to the people. When the Lord spoke to Eli, eh, Ezekiel, he said, prophesy to dry bone. No dry bone, hear the words of the Lord. I'm about to put fresh air into you and give you new flesh. Declaring God's mind is prophecy. So if you are a son here, if you are a daughter here, the mind of God is that you declare the mind of God. You are God's mouthpiece. On your campus, you are God's mouthpiece. Listen to me, all you that are students in secondary school, university, listen. We are in the hand time. The days are very, very evil. You are supposed to be light. You must keep on shining. Influences, negative influences are many. Don't let them override you. There are negative influences. Terrible influences. Listen, in those days, when witches come to the church, you will know them. Abisa, ah, prayer. Hey. The witches will not stay now. Ah, rugged prayer. They will be uncomfortable. In when you were in secondary school, when you were in secondary school, when you were in secondary school, I gave my life to Christ in secondary school when I was in secondary school. We know the number of issues. You can count them. Any negative spirit in our midst, we, 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 we manifest. We can't stay. But today, because the days are evil, this is the end time, this is very lost times. There have been a lot of mingling. You have a lot of forces of darkness, even leading prayer worship. A lot of forces of evil leading prayers. Becoming choir masters, head of ushers, prayer warrior. Because it's very lost times. But in the midst of it, he said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
light will continually shine in the midst of darkness. Then when you read it further, he said, and your young men shall see visions for all you youths in higher institution. By now, you should begin to see the visions of God's mind concerning your life. Before you graduate, you should know where you are going. My ministry began in 1985. But before 1985, oh, 1985, I was 25 years old at 1985, and the ministry started. Next year, we shall be 48, 40 years. Mozambique shall be 40 years next year. Right from the campus, right from the campus, I have known where I was going. I have known I will be in ministry. Young men shall see visions. What does God create you for? He can't hide it from you. He showed, he showed Joseph at age 17. He showed, he showed David at age 12. So at age 20, you ought to have known what God wants to create you for. To Jeremiah, he said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I have sanctified you, a prophet of the nation. How, how can you get to this point? At 20 years, 18 years, 19 years, and you don't know what God wants to do with your life. So when the Bible is saying here, each of you shall return to his family. Go back to the mind of God concerning your family. Youth, go back to the mind of God concerning your life. You shall see visions. Sons and daughters, go back to the mind of God concerning your destiny. You are to prophesy. You are to declare God's mind. You are to speak, you are to speak the mind of God. And he said, an elderly ones, what do they do? He said, upon your hand, maybe, and the main servant, will I do what? Pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. He said, an old man shall dream dreams. Ah, he has assignment for every type, type of people, from children to old men. He has assignment at this same time. What's your assignment? Go back to your family. As I'm rounding up, I want to pray for us. Let every husband go back to his family. Your spiritual responsibility as a husband. Because that is God's plan. If you want to enjoy this season of jubilee, go back to the loving of your wife. All this type of separating yourself from her, dissociating yourself from her, causing her emotional pain, being carried away by the job that you have leaving your wife run around with too many things in her head some wives are older than their age because of the negligence of the husband deliberately putting all works upon her directing the roots of their family to their house When family is coming from anywhere in the country, they will branch in their house. You open the door for all of them to be coming, and it is the wife that was cook. At 8.30, the woman is already getting old, even with four children. Right from this evening, get sense. See correctly. Because your wife shall become beautiful again. See, even the men I'm talking to are not talking. Your wife shall become beautiful again. And you women, go back. Go back to your family. Go back to the love. Go back to the submission. Go back to the assignment, your responsibility as the wife. Return to your family responsibility. Submission off this arrogance put off this stubbornness it will not allow you to enter into the season that God has covenanted with this church it's a covenant of jubilee covenant of freedom covenant of restoration the Lord who did this within a very short time is giving us a parable of what he wants to begin to do now because there is no time for God to 
to take long to do some things again. He, had, he did this one within a very short time. It's a sample of what he wants to begin to do. It's part of the covenant. It's part of the promise. It's part of the deal with this church. If you want to enjoy that covenant, go back to your family in submission. Play your role to your husband. Enough of running away from your responsibility as a woman. Enough. Don't let the devil enter into you the way he entered into the wife, into the hearts of women in the scriptures. Don't let the devil make you stubborn, arrogant, hard against your husband. We know you have power. We know you have power. However strong your, your husband is, we know you can break her down. You can break him. But use your influence correctly. Your power is in submission. Your power is in loving your husband. Your power is in submission because your submission is as unto Christ. Not to the man. Finally. I want to read this passage as we rise up on our feet. In this season. This season. Let's rise up on our feet. I want to read this passage, this verse to us. And we will pray with it. Yes, I want to read from Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 14 and 15. When the Lord is speaking to us tonight, return to your family. This is also part of it. Matthew chapter 6, 14, 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will for also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. This is a very, very important aspect of going back to your family. If you forgive, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will forgive you. What has your wife done that you have not forgiven? What has your husband done that you have not forgiven? We are talking about the covenant, the covenant of Jubilee, a new covenant God is giving to this church, covenant of freedom, deliverance. But if you want to enjoy it, how will God forgive you when you have not forgiven your wife? Despite asking for forgiveness, even if she did not ask for forgiveness, there is no condition for this forgiveness. Oh, how will God forgive you when you have not forgiven your husband? Even despite asking for forgiveness. You, how can you enter into that covenant? How can you enter into a covenant of deliverance when you have not forgiven? Do you know the danger of this passage? When you have not forgiven your wife, your sins are not forgiving you. You carry the responsibility of your sin and get ready to pay the consequence. You have not forgiven your husband, then your sins are not forgiven too. Everything you have done is on record. It's not forgiving you. Can you bear the consequence? Can you face the responsibility of carrying the consequence of your sin? It is the blood of Jesus that wipes away our, and then you give room for the devil to attack. 
I can see husband and wife having grudges against each other. You are opening the de door for the devil to strike. Tonight, I pray. Every door opened for the devil is closed. Close your eyes as we pray. I want to pray. The Lord is speaking to us. Every one of you shall return to his family. Children, your parents offend you, forgive them now. Wife, your husband offend you, forgive him now, today. Husband, your wife offend you, forgive her now, today. But I'm going to take a step. I want to pray for you. If you have You, you, have, you, want, you want to present your family. There are issues concerning your family in your life. And you want to present it before the Lord. So that you can enter into that covenant of jubilee. There are issues. All what has been said, there are issues. Come forward, let me pray for you. All what has been said, you have something you want to present before the Lord concerning your family. Come forward, I will pray for you. Shall we all close our eyes? You have things you want to present. Your family is not the way it's supposed to be. Your spiritual life is not the way it's supposed to be in your home. There is issue between you and your husband. There is issue between you and your wife. I want to pray for you. Wherever you are, close your eyes. Coming out and praying.